This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Uh, question two we're going to go through from the December 2014 paper F9 exam. So as always, make sure you've got the question in front of you. And let's have a look. Uh, always look straight to the requirements first. And part A says calculate the market price of the convertible loan notes at par company. Uh, commenting on whether conversion is likely. Five marks. And part B, calculate the share price of par using the price earnings ratio method and discuss uh, the problems in using this method in valuing the shares of the company. So let's get on with it. Oh dear. Part A, first of all, the market price of the convertible loan notes. So let's have a read. They've given us recent information on the earnings per share and the share price of par. So you've got information on, on both for the last, what, one, two, four years. Uh, we've got the capital structure, an extract from the statement of financial position. Ordinary shares and reserves, bank loans and convertible loan notes. The 8% loan notes are convertible into 8 ordinary shares per loan note in 7 years time. If not converted, the loan notes can be redeemed on the same future date at their nominal value of 100. PAR has a cost of debt of 9% per year. Uh, the ordinary shares of PAR have a nominal value of a dollar per share. They've been traded on a large stock exchange for many years. Listed companies similar to PAR have been recently reported to have an average price earnings ratio of 12. Part A wants the market price of the convertibles. And remember, whether it's equity, debt, whatever it is, the market value is always the present value of the future expected receipts. So, let's have a look on a, a loan note of $100 nominal. What receipts would an investor expect on those uh, loan notes? Well, first of all, they'll expect interest. The coupon rate is 8%. So they'll expect on $100 nominal, they'll expect $8 a year, each year until um, redemption or conversion. And um, it's in, where are we? Seven years time. So from years one to seven, interest of $8. In seven years' time, they're going to have a choice. In seven years' time, they'll either uh, be able to take cash at the nominal value of 100, or they can take shares. It says they're convertible into eight ordinary shares. Now, it'll be the um, bondholders, uh, the loan notes, choice as to whether to convert or not and they won't make the decision until seven years time in seven years time they'll look to see which is better eight shares or hundred dollars but since we're trying to find the market value of these notes today it'll be based on what do they expect to happen in seven years time so we've got little workings here in seven years' time, they can either take cash of a hundred or they can take shares. I want to know what they expect they'll do. <clears throat> um, and <clears throat> what they'll expect to do depends on what they expect the share price will be. Well, the expected share price Uh, we know what it currently is. It's 2014. It's $10.90. <clears throat> but 
but it's been growing. And so presumably we'll be expecting that it'll carry on growing at the same uh, rate as it's been growing in the past. So what's the growth been in the past? Now I can't give a full lecture here. If you're not happy with working out growth rates, uh, which I'm about to do, uh, then you must look at the lectures because normally we're working out growth rates on dividends, but it's the same arithmetic, whatever you're trying to work out the growth rate on. Um, and the way we do it, if G is the growth rate, 1 plus G, how many years of growth have we got here? 2011 to 2012 was one year, to 2013 two years, to 2014 was three years. And so... 1 plus g cubed for three years' growth. How much has it grown by? Well, the latest is 1090. The earliest is 915. And so um, g is the cubed root of that. Well, 1 plus g would be the cubed root. g is that minus 1. Uh, for F9, you should be aware, you have to have a scientific calculator. You certainly need one here, a cubed root. 10.9 divided by 9.15. The cubed root, 1.06 something, minus 1. It comes to 6.01. Well, effectively, it's 0 0.06 or 6%. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, uh, on average, it's been growing at 6% a year. Um, what do we expect? It'll be in seven years' time when it comes to the conversion. Multiply by 1.06 each year for seven years. They'll be expecting a share price of... Uh, 16.39 and therefore back to where I was in seven years time they'll have the choice of either taking 100 cash or taking how many was it eight shares uh, I think or we expect the share price will be 16.39 and so the value of the eight shares we expect to be uh, 131.12. It might not be, but all we have to hear to get the current market value of these um, convertibles is to know what we expect will happen. Uh, because we expect that to be the share price, we will expect them to convert. And on that basis, the expected receipt, if I go back to my first table, in seven years' time, they expect them to get, uh, to receive, shares worth 131.12. <coughs> All right, now we can finish it. The market value of 100 nominal, uh, with the present value of those expectations, discounted, at uh, the investor's required return. Now here, you've not much choice. It says the cost of debt is 9%. So there's nothing else we could do. Do appreciate, though, for other questions. You see, there's been no tax mentioned here. Um, the co it could have been that you were told the cost of debt pre-tax was one rate, the cost of debts after tax was a different rate, because remember, companies get the benefit of tax relief. For as far as market values are concerned, though, it's always the investor who determines the market value. And so we look at their receipts pre-tax. Tax has no effect on them. Uh, and it, we discount at the return, again, pre-tax. Now again, here you've no choice, but just in general, if you work out market value, you'll take the pre-tax cost. So now it's just pure discounting. 
Uh, there's a seven year annuity at 9%. The factor is 5.033. Um, there's the other flow in seven years' time, so the ordinary discount factor for seven years at 9% is 0.547, which gives me present values of. 40.264, 71.723, a total of 1.987. One, one, one uh, what did he want? Did he want it for the unit? Yes, he did. Um, 111.9899 PC per 100 nominal. So there is the market value. He said, comment on whether conversion is likely. Well, I did comment, but make sure it stands out. Um, because I'm not specifically for it. And part of the reason is that if you went wrong on the conversion, for example, or even if you weren't sure conversion. Um, if you got a, a value lower and you decided to take, that they were likely to take cash, something's gone wrong, you'd lose a mark, but you would still get full marks for this bit of it if you'd taken 100 because you got your conversion wrong, even though the answer for that first bit would be different. I hope I'm making sense that you don't lose marks twice. Uh, and that's the problem here, you see. You get your conversion bit wrong, and you get that bit wrong. You only lose the marks the one time. Uh, that was a lot to do for five marks, to be honest. OK, let's have a look at part B, where he says, calculate the share price of par using the price earnings ratio method and discuss the problems in using this method. Well, you should know the P ratio is the market value per share divided by the earnings per share. And half a mark simply for writing that down. Uh, multiply both sides by this per share, though. The market value, which is what we're after, is the PE times the earnings per share. If you look back at the question, the last sentence uh, says the listed companies similar to par have recently have been recently reported to have an average P ratio of 12. <clears throat> so P12, we apply the P ratio of similar company to our current earnings. P's are calculated on the current earnings to our current earnings, which for 2014 are, are 62 cents which gives a market value per share of 7.44 cents or $7.44. And for the arithmetic, there we are. I mean, it's very common for him to throw in bits of P uh, values, valuations. Um, there's really no excuse there. He did want to comment, and I appreciate his comments. He says much more than he expects in the exam because he knows people learn from them and in fact I think um, his answer has gone way over the top uh, he certainly uh, he certainly would be required to produce all that he says what are the problems in using this method of valuing the shares well as always I'm not going to write a long essay but the main problem is when it says, well, sorry, we use a similar company. So fair enough, we look for companies in the same sort of business. Fine. But it's more than that. You know, companies have different retention policies, even if they're in the same business. Uh, as a result of how they retain, growth stands to be different, even though they're in the similar business. 
The pro real big problem here is it's only um, sensible if there's similar expected growth. Well, you can put it another way. You see, the PE takes no account of uh, growth directly. It takes current market value, current earnings. Uh, the more growth potential there is in a business, um, the more the market value will be. And that's the big problem. When you're using similar companies, I say again, they need to be in the same sort of business. That's fine. But just because they're in the same business doesn't mean that we've got similar expectations of growth. Uh, that's the big problem. And that alone would get me most of the uh, marks for the right written bit of it. Um, the other comment, the only other real comment that's worth making is that because they've given us information about the current share price, it does mean that we're already, that PAR is a quoted company. And if you're a quoted company, it's a bit silly to be doing this. Because so what if similar companies have a PE of um, 12? You know, that's the average of all similar companies. We're one of those companies. Our PE, I'm not going to work, work it out. We could work it out, actually. It's 10, 90, 90 by 62. Our PE might be 2, it might be 20. You know, other similar companies have higher and lower PEs. That's the average. Uh, we are quoted um, PE valuations are really used for valuing unquoted companies. That's when it becomes useful. I know the market value of this company is 1090. You know, why don't you do a PE value? It is 1090. Last year it was 1049. It's when you have an unquoted company and you're trying to put a value on it. That one approach you might use is, on a PE basis, look at similar quoted companies to solve. So, there's question two.